Welcome back to another video, and we're finally back doing something with the Snap Maker. I have been using it quite a bit actually, but I've only been doing sort of laser cutting, and it just sort of works, and I don't need to worry about it too much. And for my 3D printing, I have another 3D printer where I just sort of hit print and it just works every time, so I don't tend to mess around with the Snap Maker for 3D. But lo and behold, we have another job for Snappy and we need to get this done. So what are we doing? Well, I need to print in carbon nylon filament and my other printer can't do it. It doesn't have a proper heated bed and the uh, uh, nozzle hot end can't get up to the temperatures we need. So we have to retrofit the Snap Maker. We're gonna try this out. I couldn't find much info online if people have managed to pull this off. But we're going to try and see what happens. So what are we dealing with here? Well, we have a dry box, um, which will be storing the filament. And why do we need to do this? Well, it's because 3D printer filament is generally hydroscopic and it will suck up moisture. This stuff is really hydroscopic. It can get ruined in 15 minutes sitting out in the open air. And we cannot have this just hanging in the breeze above the, the print bed and just going off as we're printing with it. And it's, it's not the cheapest stuff either. So, you know, we've got to try and savor how much we can use for this. So it goes in this dry box, which has desiccant in there and that feeds out. And we have a tube which will feed the filament to try and protect it from the open air. Um, the problem is that, you know, this tube has to go to the print head and the print head just goes straight in and there's nothing to, um, you know, to hold, hold the, uh, what's known as a Bowden tube, but it's not really a Bowden style extruder, but we can still use the tube to protect the filament. So what are we going to do to start this off? Well, we don't even know if this is going to work like this whole thing. I've got hardened hot end nozzles to put in. I've got various stuff. But I thought I'd do a video on this just to see if it does work and, you know, we'll just sort of fly by the seat of our pants. So what we need to do first, which is why I wanted to get this video started, um, we have to do something with the top of this so we can fit these um, little springy compression fittings that hold this tube in place. So what we're going to do is we are going to drill out this hole going to take this out first obviously we're going to drill it we're going to tap it and we should be able to mount this in the top and then we can we've got the filament nice and safe then we can actually start testing the snap maker and seeing if this stuff works this doesn't really affect the printer in any detrimental way it can just stay in here even if it doesn't have a tube attached and filament can just feed through the hole anyway so i'm happy to make this modification and just leave it permanently yeah so we've got a tap here we've got a drill bit uh to to put it out this is m6 thread so that's what we're looking at drilling uh so we're going to drill this out to m5 and then we're going to tap it to an m6 thread so that's what we're going to be doing we're going to uh get set up in the mill and let's um just churn this out quickly All right, nothing ever goes to plan. I was, I was really struggling with this piece because it's so thin. It really needs like a jig or something to hold it properly while you drill it out and tap it. I should have done that, but you know, live and learn. I only need to do this once, hopefully, but anyone else doing this, be very careful with this part if you're trying to hold it in a vise or anything because it just pinches the tap and you really struggle. But I managed to, to salvage enough threads with it to get this in and it actually locks in there really nicely i'm happy with that and we've got our um bowden tube here which will feed in and there you go 
that is all I wanted. <laughs> so the filament's going to feed through here, straight into here, keeps it out of the air. It will still get air in here, but it'll minimize it for the dry box and just help protect things. So I'm going to get this mounted now and we'll see what happens. Overall, I would say that this project has gone really well. Uh, done a few test prints here. This is, um, I mean, the wall symmetry is not perfect. You can see a few areas where it's sort of uh, just sort of stepped out of line a little bit, maybe a bit of over extrusion or the alignment is just a little bit out. I'm not sure yet, but overall for a stock, print like I haven't done much in the way of fine tuning or adjustments yet that is very impressive and really happy with that the uh, test cubes are really impressive as well the durability is insane like I cannot 
crush these. These are only like a 10% infill, and it's ridiculous as is. Um, the dimensional accuracy is very, very good. Like I said, I have done no calibrations. I have not calibrated the extruder. And this stuff is pretty much working out of the box. I will overlay uh, some settings I used in Lubin that can help you get started. But it was basically using one of the carbon fiber templates already and just adjusting it a little bit. So yeah, we still need to do more testing with this stuff. I need to do some testing with uh, fine details and see how it goes with that. But the dimensional accuracy is there. And considering all I did was change the hot end and um, put in that Bowden tube, I'm really, really impressed. Yeah, um, stay tuned for more Snapmaker content. I have another machine coming and, um, you know, I don't just do amplifiers on my channel or whatever. I do all makerspace sort of stuff and I just do general screwing around with everything. So, yeah, stay tuned for the next video coming soon.